Hi, it's Stephanie with Spotify Steph's World. Our next guest, you might know as number 451. His name is Phil Kane, and he was on Squid Games. Thank you so much for coming by. Hey, thanks so much for having me. So you're also in a band, which is awesome, uh, Six Ways to Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, you guys describe yourself as pop punk. Um, so Much For Forever is coming out. That sounds emo. That sounds like a sad song. That's what we were going for. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask about Squid Games, though, first. I love that you're into music because I've done rock and roll radio for 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, how did you sleep? That's my first question. <laughs> so, I mean, I didn't super well. Uh, so we, there were no clocks or anything in there. And so there was no way to tell like when the sun was up, when the sun was down or like what time it was. And so they would just kind of like tell us to go to sleep at whatever time and then shut the lights off. And then after however many hours they would turn them back on and again, but we would have no idea like how much time we were actually out for. Allegedly they were letting us sleep for eight hours straight, but a lot of the time it didn't feel like that. Yeah. And then what is there? 500 of you guys or 600? Uh, 456. Yeah. 456. Okay. And mm -hmm. wasn't there people that snored or got up in the middle of the night? Yes, there were lots and lots of them. And the fun fact about being in a massive like dorm studio like that is you can hear just about everything because everything kind of echoes. So the trick was to go to sleep before everyone else, because by the time you got to the point where everybody else was falling asleep, that's when like the the noise and all that kind of started. <laughs> you had to be in the REM sleep before, yeah. you know, people were kind of that I think is another game in and of itself being sleep deprived and trying to sleep while you're on a game show that you need to use your mental strength. Yeah. I love that. You know, when you posted that, I didn't really comprehend that you were a sleeper in the first episodes. You weren't causing mm -hmm. drama and problems. And then you pop out of nowhere and you're a lead runner at the end. Yeah, well, I wasn't, I, I was a literal sleeper because I was coming from uh, uh, Hawaii, which was a 10 hour time difference to being in London all of a sudden. And so I was literally very sleepy during the, that like first half of no the way. So But just you made, you blended in, you cut the cookie, you didn't fall asleep doing that. And so- Exactly, it worked out in my favor, I guess. But <laughs> Dang, is seeing paper, is this like a sore subject? for you is for, it hard to look at paper after Rochambeau oh you chose paper nah it's all good it, it okay. I'm, I'm kind of over it I have two therapists so I'm chilling <laughs> oh my gosh no I love it's only 4.5 million right yeah, it's exactly. not a, no, it not a, who's <laughs> counting um but you did at least you kept your dignity you were nice you know you played the good way I I will say man the winner was cutthroat she could be in the FBI she was sneaky at yeah, playing everybody. She was, no, she, she definitely earned her victory, but that was something that like, I, I really uh, told myself like at the beginning was like, you know, no matter what happens, I'm not going to compromise on my morality. I'm not gonna compromise on who I am because like realistically, how far am I gonna make it anyway? <laughs> and then, you know, did I did it. So far, and I was like, Whoa. all right. You didn't think you'd be top two or even top 10? No, never, not once. Because like mathematically, it's like the odds are crazy, right? And so many of the games are luck-based. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just here to have fun. I'm gonna make some friends. I'm gonna enjoy this unique experience. And whenever I go out, I go out. And then I just kept winning. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> and sort of spiraled into this whole thing, you know? That's awesome. What was your favorite challenge and least favorite challenge? Um, honestly, my favorite challenge was probably the cookies just because they were honestly delicious because we were deprived of all flavor, salt, like food, the whole thing, like during the entire time that we were there, except for that like little cookie treat. And I was, oh, it just tasted so good when I had my little tongue on it. Um, but, uh, but the hardest one easily was red light, green light. That was brutal. I mean, we were out there playing that game for, I think like seven or eight hours or something like that. We like had to hold that position for like 30 minutes at a time uh, so that they could come around and get the camera footage and all that kind of stuff. No bathroom breaks, no nothing. So I like legitimately like couldn't feel my feet by the end of it. <laughs> um, wow. I had no idea. I'm glad we got this information from you behind the scenes. So it wasn't just as hard as red light, green light is on its own, but because of editing purposes, you guys had to hold those poses and yeah wow how yeah, did that you know, the older people do it i don't like that's crazy i don't know because i barely got through i mean it did cut like everybody in half pretty much like I th we started with 456 and i think there was about 200 by the time that that one game was over um so it definitely eliminated a lot of people but like i was even surprised like in myself being able to just like endure that much and be able to make it across the finish line after so many hours of playing like that was really surprising to me but it also kind of showed me like how much I am able to endure and kind of how strong I am in that situation. And so I figured, well, if I can survive that, I'll probably be fine <laughs> for the rest of the show because that was easy. Yeah. Part. That's already mentally and physically draining, you know, like my hats off to people. It was very fascinating.
-hmm. At first, when I saw the preview, I'm like, oh my gosh, how are they going to do this? And then it was very (laughs) realistic. It was very like the real Squid Games. But I thought they were feeding you guys on the side. Maybe you were going back to hotels at night and there was no perks. Nope, nope. So we were we were in hotels for the first couple of nights because we had to quarantine before the show started. And we were in hotels um, up until they showed us entering the dorm after red light, green light. So it was only the people that made it through red light, green light that were actually able to go into the dorms and then continue on for the rest of the show. Wow. Who what, like was the most devastating when someone went home to you? Um, I, th- I mean, there is a lot of it. So the, the thing about being in that situation is like, you don't have your phone, you don't have anything to sort of like anchor you to this reality. There's no clocks, you don't see the sun. So the only thing that you have to kind of keep you sane is like people and their stories. And that's all you have to do too. There, there's no playing cards, there's no nothing. All you have to do is talk to people and hear their stories and sort of uh, feel their experiences. And so we became very close to each other very quickly, like over the, like the two and a half, three weeks or whatever that we shot the show, like we all became very close to each other. And so losing that person like in a game almost felt like a real death. Like it was like, oh my God, like they're gone and I'm never going to see them again. Um, and like, you don't know, Netflix is not clapping them in the parking lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there's, there's no way to know. And so for me, the the, the toughest one was losing um, uh, Jackie, player 393. She was easily my rock in there. I mean, she we had like a really special bond through the whole thing. And so losing her really made it feel very real. I was like, wow, like this is tough. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it through the rest of it without her. But then I sort of felt like I like owed it to her. I owed it to the rest of the friends that I had made in that time period to, you know, keep going, you know, it's going to be worth it at the end. Just, just sort of keep your head up, keep your head straight. (laughs) Yeah. Well, congrats. I mean, it's incredible that you made it to the final two. That is (laughs) phenomenal. So, and it was cute. It was actually my girlfriend that said, you need to talk to Phil because he has a really cool band. And I was like, oh, okay, righteous. And so that's who, I guess she's a big fan of Six Ways to Saturday. And so you guys have, um, what is it? Proper Dose. That's already out now. Mm -hmm. And then So Much For Forever just came out. Yeah, so so we released three singles before this EP, um, and so that was uh, in back right after, actually right when the show aired, like the day that the finale premiered, uh, we released our first single, Fantasy, um, and then a couple weeks later we released Memories, and then we released Smart. Proper Dose, and then now we just released our first full EP. Wait, cool. are you guys going to tour? Yeah, yeah, we actually just booked our first show for May 30th in New Jersey, so very excited about it. Haven't announced it yet because we haven't figured out all the details, but, uh, but we're really stoked. It's going to be you a good time. You guys need to come over to the West Coast of California. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the dream, you know, sort of start small. Like we, when we started this project, like we, we'd been in a band before we were a part of a band called Crime Alert back in, um, in college. And we were taking it seriously. Like we, you know, we're making our own music. We were, you know, touring and then sort of like playing shows and stuff. And eventually kind of fizzled out when everybody, you know, got busy doing work and, and school and all that kind of stuff. Um, until, uh, recently we got back together and we were like, all right, this is going to be it. Like we're going to, we're, we're going to make this happen now or else it's never going to happen. And so, the, and the show really helped us also. Um, sort of get that initial like big like attention and like social media following and all that kind of stuff. And so we're basically going to try to ride that wave as long as we can and see what happens, try to make the dream happen. What a great idea. So what does it sound like? What's What do you think is your music um, sound like? Or is there a band that everybody knows that it's a yes. similar sound? So what I, what I love about our music is that honestly, we play something that's just like a little bit different to everything else that's out there because we're all coming from different influences. Like myself, like I'm like a classic pop punk fan. So I'm into like, you know, the Blink-182, Green Day, Simple Plan, Fall Out Boy, Sum 41, like that kind of stuff. I love them. Um, yeah. Our, our bassist and, and other singer, Morgan, uh, she's really into like the heavier stuff. So she's into really like, you know, sort of heavier like rock and and stuff like that. And our, and our other, uh, my our guitarist and other singer, Tyler, he's into like sort of like a light, like a mix of the two, sort of like the heavier side of pop punk and stuff like that. And so I think all that blending of genres is sort of what helped us create this like super unique music that we're really excited about. So we like to describe it as kind of like modern pop punk alternative rock with like a, like a modern twist. So it's like, it's like the classical stuff from the 2000s, but sort of for the modern day. And that's all coming back right now. There's emo tours and all this yeah. stuff. And I, I love it. I'm here yeah. for it. They finally figured out they can make money off our generation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. When we were the uncool kids that liked that, and now it's like cool to like that. Exactly. Music. Like when we were young is happening. Like all these big bands are coming back. Like Avril Lavigne put out a new album. Like all this, like <laughs> all these like yeah. people are coming back. We're like, all right, yeah. You know, this is the time. You know, strike while the iron's hot. Now I'm not the hot topic kid that's a creep in the corner. It's like kind of hip to like that music. So exactly. I dig it. <laughs> Are you guys going to perform in Squid Games jumpsuits? 
Um, probably not. We're trying to lean a little bit away from the Squid Game stuff. Okay. Like, it was fun. We know it was nice to be able to use it for publicity and all that, but we're we're trying to be known like for our music and for our just art six kind of ways thing. to Saturday now. And you're not doing yeah. any like intro songs or anything sound bites. No, exactly. Yeah. I also I, I actually don't think I can legally use a Squid Game to promote our stuff uh, for like for like the Netflix contracts and all that kind of stuff. So I think I have to have their permission to be able to do that kind of oh. stuff. But we're we're fine with that. We're we're gonna be okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's cool. I'm glad that I. Still stumbled across your band, you know, like that. But now you guys got to tour across all the states and come by, you know, and we want to check you out. If you come to Sacramento, I definitely want to come out to the show. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's the dream. We're going to start small. Our first show is going to be in North Jersey, kind of where we're all located. And then we're going to start uh, uh, migrating into Manhattan and sort of New York City, Philadelphia, sort of expanding into the Northeast. We have like plans for like, you know, Rhode Island and Boston, like sort of like expanding there and then eventually hoping to take a whole like national tour is the, the dream. That'd be awesome. How do, so what's your socials for the band? How do we find you? Yes, yeah, so we're at Six Ways to Saturday on all platforms. We're prioritizing um, Instagram and TikTok right now. Um, so definitely check us out. Uh, my personal Instagram is at Avatar Phil. I'm also on TikTok and Instagram. And yeah, that, that's the, the link to all our music, the link to all our other channels and stuff. Perfect place to find everything. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for stopping by, Phil. And we wish you yeah. guys the best of luck. And definitely check out Six Ways to Saturdays, guys. Yeah, thanks so much for having me.